Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Ed Bud here. Today I've got a race recap for you from the Immortal Sport Salisbury Half Marathon. So, very, very close guys. Things were going exceptionally well on this race up to a certain point and then things took a bit of a downturn. Let's get into the details. First up, I'd like to say thank you to all those subscribers, all those that have commented, all the Strava followers, all those on Instagram that have given me their best wishes, best of luck messages, and also sort of commiserations to a point. I'm really, really appreciative of all of you. Thank you very much for all those messages. So I attempted the Salisbury Half Marathon on Sunday. It was an event put on by Immortal Sport. I believe there are around about 850 people running. Uh, I think there were perhaps a few more who entered but were put off perhaps by the conditions. I managed to arrive at the race with enough time to be able to get into the front pack near to the 1 hour 30 pacer. I did see Rob Gundry there, really good to see him back out racing again. Hi to you Rob. Initially conditions were ideal for me really. I love a bit of rain, I love a little bit of wind just to cool me down. Temperatures weren't too high but that changed drastically during the race. Due to those very wet conditions on the floor, I mean there have been some ridiculous weather the previous evening. I've been roped into doing a musical performance to help out one of the typical members of the band. Unfortunately, one of his family was very ill, so he was unable to attend, so I had to step in at the last minute. You know what it's like with running, with life. The most important thing always is those friends and their family members. You've got to take care of those people first. The other stuff has to come second, so had to step in but it was a good show. I opted for the Vaporfly Next Percent and in some ways I think it was a good decision, in others perhaps not so good, but I'll get into that a little bit later on. So I set out to keep that 1 hour 30 pacer very close by or just to the side of me and this worked out really really well in the initial part of the race. I went out a little quick perhaps in hindsight, but it didn't feel too quick. I didn't feel like I was belting along or using up too much energy. So that first mile was complete in around about six minutes, 35. But I reined things in a bit for the next two miles. They were in about six minutes, 43, and then six minutes, 53. So I was into a nice rhythm then, things were feeling really good. The weather was starting to get quite changeable then. I could feel it was getting a little humid. The race did start at 12 midday, and thus it probably hit about the highest temperature it was going to. But then we had this kind of mix of rain, wind, and then sort of baking hot sunshine, and it was pretty tough. While that rain was coming down, I was really pleased I adopted for the Vapor Weave uh, equipped Vaporfly Next Percents. They did me really well for that section of the race. So why did I opt for the Vaporfly Next Percent over the Gakuso 4%? Well, I looked at the rain, I looked at the weather forecast, there was supposed to be loads and loads of rain, loads of moisture. In the past I've had quite a few issues in terms of fly net, um, with that kind of hanging onto that water. And last time out, when it was wet, I got some really bad blistering around here at the sides of my foot. I had a few lace related problems as well, last time towards the end of the half marathon, uh, back in Yeovilton. Thought, let's go for the next percent, slightly different lacing, off to the side, it's not going to give me that pressure on top of my forefoot, and also, I have had issues with slipping before, even on roads, with the outsole on the 4%. So gave these a shot, and I've got to say, traction on wet road is really, really good. Within a few meters of getting my feet wet, the water just seemed to disappear from the shoe. I was really quite amazed. Um, it was quite a pronounced difference between the next percent and the 4% in terms of how it held on to that moisture. So am I happy with my decision and going with the next percents? Yes. But I still have to say, I find the 4% Flyknit has more propulsion from that plate. I really do feel that slightly different drop between the heel and the toe does make a difference in terms of that propulsive feel. I have to say, traction on them is fantastic. On those wet road surfaces, this kind of traction area here did really, really well. It feels a lot more uh, sticky, I guess. It just seems to grip the road a little bit better in wet conditions than the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. There were some slight elevations and then descents on that sort of initial part of the loop. The course is made up of two loops. Um, I'll stick some info up on the screen for you to see. So I entered that fourth mile. Again, another one of those slight elevations and declines. Just trying to keep the pace very, very consistent. Staying with that 130 pacer. So on entering the cathedral area, this is kind of like a loop that you go around and it takes you back out again on the main loop of the course. I noticed I probably hit a 10k PR. So I was really pleased about that, really buoyant at this point. 
things were feeling really good, the legs were feeling really, really great. And I was thinking, I just need to maintain this now, I just need to keep rolling, and I'll at least be in for a half marathon PR, or I could even get towards that sub 130. I was bang on where I needed to be. Moving forward, back out onto that loop again, uh, around about seven miles, I was thinking to myself, I've got a chance here really to get that 130 PR. Then, round about mile eight, disaster struck. I kind of went up to rub my already congested nose. You guys probably saw, feeling very congested towards the end of last week of the taper, and wasn't really feeling that much better at the start of the race, but went up to uh, kind of wipe my nose and noticed a red right hand. So slight nosebleed, I was a little bit kind of horrified to start with, I wondered what on earth was going on really, but I was very, very lucky to be close by to somebody who kind of come out of his house actually and was just giving out water bottles to people. I grabbed one of those water bottles and fortunately had some tissue with me, managed to utilise that to kind of stop anything else from happening with the nose and sort of wipe my hands off, which cost me a bit of time. So in trying to stop the flow of blood there, I was really having to breathe through my mouth entirely then and things started to get really tough. So I tried to keep on moving forward despite my issues, but in my mind I was kind of thinking, oh, this is gonna this is gonna cause me problems. I'm probably not gonna be able to hit those times that I need to hit now. So I dropped off the pace in that mile to around about seven minutes, 15 per mile, and the next few miles I decreased over time. It was just a downward spiral from there. In fairness, I was really amazed that I finished in the time I did. On that last sort of three or four miles, it was tough going. I just really lost the rhythm and pace of my breathing. I found that perhaps I breathed a lot through my mouth, um, but also there must be some air coming through my nose as well to sort of supplement uh, that breath that I'm taking in through my mouth. So it was really, really wonderful to kind of see the, the cathedral again, go around that final loop, and in fairness, the legs were really, really heavy. By the end, that last sort of mile or so, I was just willing myself to carry on. And as I came up to the clock, I was really quite surprised to see one hour 35. I knew that I'd, I'd missed out on that sub 130, and I probably missed out on getting a PR on the half marathon distance as well. But all things considered, I'm really, really glad that I carried on and I continued. It showed a bit of mental strength. So official time was one hour, 35 minutes and 18 seconds. It wasn't all negative. There were some PRs in there. So I got to take those positives. Hit 10K at 42 minutes. So I've chopped off about 40 seconds off my personal best at that 10K distance. Strava recorded at both 15K and the 10 miles. There were PRs as well. So I was doing something right. It's just a shame I just couldn't keep it rolling for that last three, four miles. The old nozzle here really put a spanner in the works. That side, I'm really glad I carried on and I finished the race. I think that start time perhaps foxed me a little bit. I certainly think the tank was a little bit empty come sort of 11 miles. I did have a gel, but can you imagine someone with quite a lot of toilet tissue surrounding their nose, trying to breathe through his mouth, trying to drink some water and trying to eat a gel whilst running. It was uh, quite a comedy situation, I should imagine, for anybody that saw me going by. I think I was uh, sort of mumbling to myself as well at the time. So if you did see me, that's what was happening. You've got to laugh about these things, right? Come on. I have one of those Morton gels as well, and they are really quite thick, like a jelly type substance. So I had that in my mouth. I was trying to, trying to breathe through my mouth at the same time. And yeah, it just it wasn't happening. I had to get some energy in there, but that wasn't going to happen. That nose incident really threw me off kilter and took the wind out of my sails, quite literally really, no, no pun intended there. A real test mentally then for me, I've certainly taken away a lot from this race. In the future, a very slightly slower first mile could help me. It could push back that initial appearance of fatigue just a little bit back into the back end of the race. I think it was quite a tough prep for this race really. Obviously I had the very late evening to help out you know friends and family there getting to bed at 2 a.m it's just not really going to wash when you've got a race the next day that side i did manage to get about seven or eight hours sleep but it still didn't make up for that late night but what would you do certainly feeling congested as well at the back end of the taper really didn't help on those last few practice runs those last few training runs that i did so not the greatest prep not a lot I could do about that though. Looking at those splits, I was gold up until eight miles. I was still averaging bang on that six minutes, 51 seconds per mile, which was that goal half marathon target pace. So at that 9.3 miles, I was still on 
for just over that 130. So it was that last few miles there where I just really struggled to breathe. It cost me. I still would have been well in then as well for a half marathon PR, but it was just, there was no coming back from that one. Some other positives there, just things to take away from the data really. Notice that my overall heart rate was a lot lower than it was in my previous half marathon attempt at the Heron half marathon back in June. There it was around about 170 beats per minute. This time around, it was about 164. So a fairly considerable difference there. And certainly that first six, seven miles, it was, it was easy. I was just hitting those paces without really even having to think about it. I wasn't really even thinking about the breathing. I was just absolutely fine. So coming in the time I did, I was about 49 seconds off a new PR, or at least getting in under the Heron Half Marathon time. So really quite astounding considering the decline at the towards the end of the race. Certainly an improvement in fitness overall and higher paces through all the other miles. I really don't think it was a situation that I just burnt myself out. Really, this thing just didn't do me any favours. Other positives, just looking at cadence, certainly kept that up, around about 172 steps per minute. So a little higher than my Heron Half Marathon cadence. In terms of the course itself, it was a great challenge. Certainly very flat, a few elevations and declines here and there. No real majorly tight corners to contend with and some quite long straights. So I think some runners got a little confused towards the end of the race on the second loop when you had to go into this kind of park area and do like a loop around that park and then back into a grass area where the finish was. In fact, I think there was a lady just in front of me who kind of pulled up almost towards the finish. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but I kind of went round and kind of continued on. It was quite clear to me where the finish was and by that point, I really wanted to get to it. Certainly by the end of the race, that grassy area is very slippery and not really the ideal footwear for grass running there. Certainly no good for grass. So certainly a really great t-shirt technical t-shirt there and medal from this race as per usual with those by Immortal Sport. There were some really supportive marshals out there thanks to those guys obviously giving up their time and stuff to make sure everybody's safe out there. And lots of good crowd support certainly when we headed back into the city centre. Loads of people there, some nice choirs singing away, so really great stuff. Onwards and upwards. Can't be down about it. I know what I was targeting for was that sub 130. Hey, there's lots of positives here. Certainly the training's had an improvement in that fitness. I was able to hit those paces that I needed for that sub 130 attempt pretty much through to the eighth mile. I think without that congestion, slightly more sleep the night before and a bit more fuel in the tank, I think next time we can do it. So that's all for me for today, guys. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done already. It would mean a lot to me. Please comment below and tell me about your half marathon or marathon or 10k attempts you've been up to recently. Let me know your progress. Let me know how you got on. Please give this video a thumbs up like so it moves us up the rankings. And also make sure you share it with any other runners that might be interested. Thanks for watching through to the end. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.